Hello and welcome to a new EasyDigitals.com video tutorial. Remember, you can get all of our high quality Photoshop and Photoshop Elements templates at EasyDigitals.com. Just click on the Products button. And don't forget to sign up for our monthly newsletter. We give away free templates and tutorials each and every month, along with product update info and coupons. Okay, Kim, what easy tutorial are you going to show us today? Today, I want to go over the Athletic Style template set and show you how you can customize it to make your very own creations. So what I have up right now is a finished product. We're going to create the same design but with a horizontal layout. And I'm going to show you a few different things you can do to turn it into black and white and to soften the background. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to move this off to the side. And here is what the template will look like when you open it up. And if you need to know how to open one of the templates, when you're in Photoshop or Elements, you can just come up to File and click Open. And then you can just browse to wherever you have the template, and that's how you open it. So we're going to go ahead and open up our pictures that we're going to use in this set and these are the pictures that I'm going to use, these three right here. In customizing this template, you're going to know pretty much everything that you need to know to customize any of the templates in this set because the Memory Mate is actually one of the most uh, complex ones, so once you know this one, you can pretty much customize any of them. So here are my pictures and they're up, and this is my Memory Mate. And um, first of all, I just want to go over the workspace. So we have this background, and we have this file called Largest Photo here. And I actually have the background gray just so that you can kind of see what is where your photo would go. But honestly, it really needs to be white. So one of the things you're going to want to do pretty quickly is turn this layer on. But for right now, we'll just leave it off. I have a hue saturation layer here that is one that is going to help us change the background or and you can just use it like that. You have a gradient right, a gradient left, a gradient bottom, and a gradient top. And these each have a color fill attached to them which you can change to any color. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that one off and this is how it is set up when you get it. The other thing is you're going to have these boxes which by pressing the shift key and pulling down on this in Photoshop you can make these bigger or smaller and then you press enter once you change the size and you can change as long as you grab this little area right here where it has this little curve you can move this around and change it. If you want to make the um, box a different size as far as changing the shape of it. I don't recommend that you change it unless you like this square which isn't exactly uh, perfect. I don't suggest you change it that way. I suggest that you make it straight by using one of these guides and then press enter and then pull it out to whatever size you want and then press enter and then angle it it'll make it a more square box if you do it that way. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my history and I'm going to undo all that and go back to where I was. I have my layers palette to the right, I have my history up, I have my transform tool selected, I have auto select layer check marked and show transform controls. So I'm going to go ahead and come to my photos and I'm just going to drag this photo in where it says your largest photo here. Drag it in. I'm going to get this one out of the way. I, I have Photoshop 5, CS5, and I like to change it to a smart object when I bring it in so that as I resize it, it doesn't change the resolution or anything. So I'm going to go ahead and click View, Fit on Screen, so it'll show me the whole picture and I'm going to press my shift key and I'm going to resize this to fit into this box. Press enter. Actually, yeah, we're going to put this up here. So I'm going to bring it up here. Made 
I had uh, was thinking I was working on the background, but I'm working on this photo. And I'm going to right click, click here where it says create, create clipping mask. So my photo's in place, but I actually want this underneath, so I'm going to drag this down. And my other photo, I'm going to pull that out and drag this one in. Close that out. Change it to a smart object. View, fit on screen, shift. And I could also angle this photo, but I'm not going to. Press enter, right click, create clipping mask. And then I'm going to zoom in here, look at this, make sure it's in place and none of the edges are showing. And then I'm going to come over to my stadium photo and that's going to go in the bottom where I was earlier. Bring it in, drag it over. I may need to make some adjustments here so I'm going to right click it, change it to a smart object and make it smaller till I get it where I want it. Press enter. Now this is where if you wanted to you could use the hue saturation layer that's here or you can add a hue saturation layer. If you ever want to add one you just come here and click hue saturation and then you have a new hue saturation layer. And what you can do with these is you can colorize you can change the lightness, change the color. You can also change it to black and white. And in this case, you're going to want to go ahead and turn on this largest photo here because you can also reduce the opacity. And then you can change it however you want. Of course, another thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to change these letters and you're going to want to change the color. So we'll come over here to character and to pull that up, you would click window character to open that up if you don't see it. And you can just change the number and you can resize it if you need to, to make it fit properly by just grabbing this. I'm, I'm pressing on my shift key while I'm grabbing this so that it doesn't distort it. If I don't press my shift key in Photoshop, you know, um, oh, you can get something like this, which could be fun, but I like to keep the um, aspect ratio for the letters. You can change the color by clicking right in here and you can click on his uniform and then you can adjust it however you want to. and the same down here. Then you can click here and make them the same color and you can change the name just by double clicking with your type tool and you can change this name and you can change the color the exact same way. Like if I wanted to change you know his his first name only I could do that. So and then you know you can change the year so there's a lot you can do with that. Obviously you can change and resize these boxes uh, if you want it to take more of the picture. So it's pretty flexible. Let me also show you some of the other things that you can do here with these gradients. You can change them to any color as I said earlier. You can turn them off and on and you can also if you need to cover more of your photo, uh, you can actually bring them in. So I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. I'm just going to turn this off so that you can see this. And let's say that my photo, I'm going to pull this back up, my photo is smaller than this area and I'm working with a photo from maybe a different in one of the other templates. There's a few things you can do. Press enter. So you can see here that you have a line. So you can, there's a couple things you can do. 
you can either bring the gradient up like this and because the background is white it takes care of it but if you let's say the background was black and you needed to add more black you can just frame this out with your with your rectangular marquee tool and as long as you have this selected and you have black on top you can press as long, and you're on the gradient bottom layer you can press alt backspace and it will fill it with black and you can do the same thing with this one I'm going to press control D to deselect and I'm going to push this over and there's my photo and then I can come in here and fill this in I'm going to turn that off this is my uh, area that I want to fill and I'm going to press alt backspace and it fills it in another thing you can do is if you have an unusually a, a, just a part of the photo that you kinda wanna hide you can just come over to your brush tool and choose a soft brush say the bottom here um, and make it large I'm pressing my right bracket to make it larger and you can add a new layer and it would be not clipped or you can add it to this I like to be to do everything not in a non-destructive way so I like to add a new layer when I do something in case I don't like what I did but as you can see I added more darkness and if it was white you could just add a solid color fill right click create clipping mask and change it to white if you if this was the white that you were doing it with so um, you can really customize this as much as you want I have an example um, on the site where I did have to do that because I wanted to cover part of it and I'll show you that one that is this one right here I decided to add and it looks like I might have missed a little bit right there but I decided to add some white right here because the picture was did end right here I see now that I needed to add a little bit more white because I can see a line right here and you have to be really careful about that because when you go to print it you may notice it so you definitely don't want to do that I think you can get creative and do some really cool stuff with it so I hope you enjoy it hey that was easy thanks for watching if you have any questions about this tutorial or any of our products you can always reach us at easydigitals.com have a creative day